Hello, hello. Today I have the great pleasure to start a new series. It's actually about a Blender add-on I was writing the last weeks, actually the last two months maybe even, and I want to make it available now to the public so everybody can play around with it and help me maybe be eliminating some bugs in it. Um, which for sure will be not in there, so you have nothing to do. But the idea of this Blender add-on is actually to allow you to include animations and own models in Stonehalf with a little bit yeah, support, let's say, instead of just doing everything by yourself, which might be quite painful. So. This new video series, it will be like five, six, seven videos, I'm not sure yet, should give some introduction into this topic and start right now with some basics about the files we see in Stonehalf, how they are um, used, what is included in them, all related only to the models and to the animations. So it's kind of a basics before in the second. Uh, clip we will then jump into the Blender add-on as such. So you see here running the Stonehalf graphics test, it's the standard vanilla graphics test let's say. Um, here is the Stonehalf folder, I've installed it on my D drive and in this mods folder you see a file which is called Stonehalf SMOD that's actually nothing else than a zip file, so I've just made a copy of it. Let's rename it into zip. So you see we do everything here together. And if I open the zip file, you have another Stonehalf folder in there. Let me just move it out. It will take a little bit. And then we have access to the data which is used for the graphics test. It might be different from what we will see in the final game, but I think it's quite good enough to get an impression of how things are done by the Stonehalf engine. And I don't expect that the basic idea will change dramatically. So let's just get started here. Let me remove the zip file again. Don't need this. So once you unzipped it, you can open the Stonehalf um, folder now and there are two places which are of interest. One is this entities which includes the graphical data let's say and the other one is the data part here which includes um, animation JSON files related to the models and the animations. If we take a look on the entities, let's go to the human, we see here different looks of a female and a male worker as we see him here and the women there. So if we open one of the folders we see here a body file and different head files and a JSON file. If we open that one what Stonehalf does is actually for each of these varieties it seems like there is a JSON file which defines to which body which heads do belong and actually it seems like this file is later on read like okay take one of these heads add it to this body and you have the finished model. I've just loaded one of the QB files here into cubicle. QB is actually a cubicle um, exchange format and if you open it actually I loaded two. One is the head here and the rest is of the uh, is the body. So if you load these QB files into Cubicle, you can see the layout. And actually, what you can do is export it from here as a as an object file. So we can later on use it in Blender. So you have to get the QB file here in, get the object file exported. Unfortunately that's only possible at the moment if you have the home or master edition which you need to purchase from uh, MindDesk. And then we have a finished object file which we can use in Blender. So 
let's take a look on the file um, on the files a little bit further so that's actually about the QB files what is behind that so that's really the graphical information here the look of it and if you go into the data rigs human let's stay with the human one we have two things skeleton animations which are of interest for us at the moment the skeletons includes a base position we have here the female open let's open the female file of this one too there we go and what does it mean the base position so from my understanding is that this skeleton is describing how this model looks like at this very moment so it is really like um, the first thing maybe it's not centered here is zero 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 on all the three axes if we take a look into the file then we see there is nothing is on zero 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 everything seems to be a little bit offset so it seems like it's really describing this position here on the coordinate system and it describes each body part so head let's see if we find it here if I click on the head you see down here the name of this object or I can press F2 and you see it here head so that's really the head description we see here then it goes on left arm left hand left thumb one left thumb two and let's see if we find this also here let's click somewhere on the body here we see name torso so you can just move it away and that's again f2 called torso then if we click now it's a little bit hard to to see let me maybe yeah, that was the wrong button turn on the wire so here we see the thumb if I click on the thumb it's right thumb 2 okay it's the right side that makes sense and right thumb 2 because that's a lower part of the thumb let's assume there is an upper part of the thumb exactly so that's right thumb 1 so you see that all the names here we have now the pelvis we have the right foot the left foot so all of these body parts are reflected in this cubicle file here and if you export it as an object will be reflected also in the object file and then this file is describing the body parts and their position so that's x y z on the axis and that's actually what's done in the skeleton so it describes this base position here there is one speciality here there are things like main hand off hand root body position this you don't find here as parts of the body these are kind of helper bones um, you will see in the future videos a little bit more how this works and an explanation about that but typically what it is it's let's say a placeholder uh, invisible body part if you want to say so which helps us with animations and placing other objects so that's how this skeleton file works what it also includes are and some other information including where the animation data is found for this particular model and some effects and also postures and the last one is kind of a hitbox so you see here the size it seems like there is a cylinder around this model which is defining the, the collision detection I guess it's kind of a, of a hitbox so this is the skeleton file and there is actually another one of interest I said skeleton is one and then animations is another one so if we continue then we see here also the female and we see different animation files it's all JSON the same format which is quite quite good you get used to read it and each animation has a own JSON file which is describing the animation so that's what we have here let's open the first one and this is now an animation file what you might recognize instantly is 
that we have here names of body parts again and they are dissimilar than here in the skeleton file. So actually what is included in the animation file is for each frame actually, so each step in the animation, you see a description of each and every single part of the model. You see here two brackets closing open again, so that indicates here is the next frame starting. So for each frame you have exactly one description for each body part and what it describes are two things. One is the position and the second one is a rotation. So position is again x, y, z and rotation is how it is called in this animation tools shown as a quaternion. So it's four numbers and it's pretty hard to understand how they are calculated so I did not even start looking into the details. But that's not further of interest as the add-on um, you will be able to download will handle this for you if you use Blender. So one thing which is of interest is that you see here other than in the skeleton file where for example the root is on the coordinates 15.5, 15.5 and 0 that here the position starts at 0, 0, 0. So these numbers here are relative to the skeleton. They are not absolute numbers in the coordinate system as it seems for Stoneheart but it has to be like 0, 0, 0 and it will be then read at the position of your model. That's how I understand it. So Stoneheart engine is doing here some translation. But you see here for each single frame actually these values are adjusted a little bit. So something happens there which is the animation. So these are the important things and also that ones which we will take a look into in the, the add-on and which the add-on uses. So I guess this was a short but hopefully informative introduction into the uh, files. If we do an animation we will have to ensure that this animation file is created and it's adhering to the standards, to the formatting standards of Stoneheart. The skeleton file if we use an existing model we do not need to touch. However if you want to create your own models then probably we will have to adjust it, create our own model fi uh, skeleton file and also if you adjust it severely you want to do some changes um, or you want to take it as a template you will also need the skeleton files. So these are the two things of importance animation file for really showing different animations and the skeleton file describing in general the position and some related informations to a model. So I don't want to do it artificially long here this, this video so that's just a short introduction about the files. We saw the QB files which you can load into uh, cubicle, you can export them into object files which we can import again into Blender. We'll show this in the next video and we see also the animation and the skeleton files which are describing where, how to position the models and how to animate them. So that's it for the moment. Um, hope you can yeah, get something out of that. Base understanding will be not bad for the further steps and hope you are taking also a look on the second, third, fourth, whatever part of this tutorial. Thanks for joining. Bye.